Welcome to Three Point Stance Pod where we don't claim to be experts. We just give our takes, take it, or leave it. We'll be fine either way. I am Octavius Vernell Brown, call me OV for short, here to bring you the first episode of our new series, What's With All What's the with Hype. All the hype. All the hype. Take a second to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It helps the show in a big way. Lately we've noticed rival team fans on Twitter aren't enjoying seeing Justin Fields and the Chicago Bears getting so much love by the media off a 3-14 and 14 season. Even sports content creators seem bitter about it. They just can't take it. They just don't get all the hype. If that's not bad enough, we have internal hating from our own Bears fan community who could easily be mistaken as double agent Packer or Lions fans the way they trash our own players. So today we start the series off with a wide receiver that led to division amongst Bears fans the moment his trade deadline acquisition was announced, Chase Claypool. Fans are either excited about his talent and potential or upset he hasn't met the value of the pick used to acquire him. There was a group of Bears fans who immediately felt it was a mistake sending a second round pick as compensation. Even more came out to blast the move when the pick ended up being 32nd overall and the Steelers select Joey Porter Jr. CB Penn State. If you're unfamiliar with Chase's origin story, then allow me to give you the sauce. Chase Claypool has only been in the NFL for three years, but quickly has had one of the fastest hype rises and falls for a wide receiver in recent history. If we're being honest, some of his fall can be contributed to himself. While with Pittsburgh, he had several incidents of immaturity, he's complained to the media about usage, and NFL experts say he doesn't play up to his talent and dominant physical frame. All these things in some ways are true, so why do I feel we need to get you to hop aboard the Claypool hype train? I hear you, big dog. Relax, let me take you down a trip on memory lane. Entering his rookie year, he was the Steelers' wide receiver for behind a stacked wide receiver room of Deontay Johnson, Juju Smith-Schuster, and James Washington. With a healthy Big Ben and an offense with plenty of mouths to feed, he had 62 receptions, 873 yards, 9 receiving and 2 rushing touchdowns. Mind you, he started just 6 games and played in 15. At 6 feet 4 inches 238 pounds, he earned the nickname Mapletron. With his size and playmaking ability, he had fans comparing him to Calvin Johnson aka Megatron. His speed and big body helped him fend off defenders and so many highlight-worthy plays, including an 84-yard touchdown. Fans were excited to see Chase take a year two leap as he earned the wide receiver three spot. Then the instability started. The Steelers fresh off a 12-4, and four, season parted ways with Randy Fickner and promoted Matt Canada to be their new OC. Big play Ben Roethlisberger was no more at the age of 39 as his body showed signs of decline. Juju Smith-Schuster also went down with a season-ending injury. Chase was still somehow able to post similar stats as his rookie year of 59 receptions and 860 yards, but the touchdown total dropped to just two receiving touchdowns. Question Bears fans, are you high or low on Chase Claypool entering his contract year? Type high or low in the comments. Year 3. Big Ben retired. Steelers started the 2022 QB carousel with drafting Kenny Pickett. An off-season QB battle ended with our old friend Money making Mitch being named the Week 1 starter. Chase was moved to the slot in an effort to show off their shiny new second-round pick wide receiver George Pickens. The offense got off to a horrible start and by Week 5 the Steelers made the change at quarterback to Kenny Pickett. The offense would need a few weeks to click and fans had already started calling for Canada to be fired. Chase seemed to be phased out the offense and an afterthought. Frustrated after a week 7 16-10 loss to the Miami Dolphins that Kenny Pickett threw three picks in, Chase gave a passive-aggressive interview about the offense lacking go balls. A little over a week later on November 1st, 2022, he was traded to the Bears. Once he was traded to the Bears, he had zero time to get up to speed without an offseason to learn the playbook and gain chemistry with Justin Fields. To boot, he was being added to a low-volume pass offense with a first-time play caller, poor offensive line play, and limited talent at wide receiver. Just keeping it a buck. 
During the Week 12 game versus the New York Jets, Darnell Mooney suffered a season-ending injury. Ironically, Chase made the biggest play of his short time with the Bears in the same game on a 31-yard go ball with Sauce Gardner covering him. Mooney's injury meant Chase had to step into Mooney's lead wide receiver role. During Week 13 versus GB, he was involved early and often with five catches until he himself suffered a knee injury in the second quarter with the Bears up 10-3. He would not return till week 17. His last two games he had two catches and more than likely was not fully healed from the injury. Going into next season, Chase is fourth, he'll be healthy and have an entire offseason to learn Luke Getze's playbook and gain chemistry with Fields. He should be extra motivated given it's a contract year. The Bears have made moves to upgrade the wide receiver room by acquiring DJ Moore from the Carolina Panthers, which in my opinion is good for Chase. There will be no pressure to be the number one threat and he won't be covered by the other team's best corner. Given the small sample we've seen from last season, I believe the Bears will move Chase all over the formation and try many different ways to get the ball in his hands. He'll also get those go balls he's been wanting while Moore, Mooney, Cummett, and newly acquired tight end Robert Tunyon work the short, intermediate, and seams. I see no reason why at 24 years old fans have decided he's a bust. So many are quick to point to his deficiencies and call his rookie year a fluke. The same people ignore all the instability since his rookie year, specifically his third year splitting between two teams with subpar passing games. I am all aboard the Claypool hype train. I feel he's going to continue to mature and improve as a receiver. The Bears will put his 4.42 speed to use on go routes and his big physical frame will help tremendously in the red zone. I'm excited for Chase to prove the haters wrong. Get your ticket and hop aboard the Claypool hype train. The train leaves the station now. Or don't and get left behind thank you for taking the time to tune into three point stance podcast like comment subscribe and turn on notifications to be notified when new content drops don't forget to follow ville and the podcast on twitter at three point stance pod and as we always say here at three point stance podcast stand for what you believe